welcome to uh, uh, Gibraltar Wines. This is a bit of a meet and greet uh, session. We like to do this uh, uh, from the senior management, get to know our uh, new employees. My name is Mike Stinson, um, a local boy, actually just right down the road from Soda Creek First Nations. Um, I don't have near the years experience of mining as a lot of people in this room. I was contracting with a group up here and got lucky and applied for the crusher helper position and was able to be employed. So I'll spend uh, you know a third of the day out in the pit uh, working with operations. I'll, uh, I'll be in the office working on the plan, figuring out what's gonna, what are we going to be doing in a month from now, three weeks from now, what we're doing today and what we're doing that hour. Mining engineering is one of the few types of engineering where you can be in the office and spend a couple hours designing something and then go out into the field and see that design happen right in front of your eyes. Canada is one of the few countries in the world that came out of the recession in a pretty good spot and that's because of the natural resource industry we have here. I mean between the oil sands and the open pit mining in uh, British Columbia, I mean Canada is doing really well. So when do we go back up? Uh, I started here as a laborer in 2005 in the mill and I've worked my way through the ranks and did most of the jobs here on site till I made it up to a uh, production foreman. And then just recently in the last year I've gone to a senior foreman. I work with some of the biggest iron out here. We got the Busires 495s, two of those. We got the uh, big P&H 320 drills. We got P&H 4100 uh, shovel, like tracks are eight feet tall on these things. The operator's sitting 40 feet in the air or better. We're moving mountains. This is my backyard. I live about 12K down the road here to know that we're doing this safely, environmentally safe, and to know there's a multi-million dollar company in my backyard and I work for them. That makes me proud. This is a 495 HR beside us. This a, that's a bigger shovel on this claim. Uh, over 100,000 tons in one scoop. Every day, regular shift, over 200 trucks. I started as a as a labor job in the mill. Then I worked my way up all the way here. This is the highest paid job on this claim right right now. This is a really productive machine. We work as a team here and we go forward as a team. And I'm really proud to be working here. People ask me what I do for a living and you know they don't believe me driving a big haul truck every day. So it's you know it's pretty neat. I grew up on a cattle ranch. In grade three I started driving low bed for my dad. He was jumping in and out of the loader and it was just more work for him so he showed me how to move the low bed. So right there, put in park and wait. <laughs> and it's an enjoyable place to work. Um, lots of opportunity for young people coming into the force. Uh, lots of apprenticeships uh, they offer here. And as you can see, they allow women to drive five million dollar machines around. We have safety meetings every month in where we, we prepare our own PowerPoint presentations and we get to stand up and, and, and talk about these issues with, with all the workers, all the different departments. I help out with incident reports and anything that needs to be done from like a safety or a health, you know, standpoint. And if everybody does their bit, then absolutely we can get the safest mine in Canada. This place wouldn't run without a control room operator. You need a centralized station where there's one person making the decisions. Because this way, you know, I can control the SAG, which then controls my ball mills, which then can make a steady flow to go into flotation. Something I never ever imagined myself doing ever. <laughs> but now I'm doing it and I like it. 
Yeah, I like it a lot. I got a, a crew, about 25 people on my crew, and uh, they all really are really good workers, all work really well together. If we have any mechanical issues, we have millwrights there and electricians that jump in and help us out with that, and uh, that's basically how we keep it going. I grew up uh, just down the road here in McLeese Lake. Uh, yeah, I never really actually thought that I would end up working up here. I've been here for about eight and a half years now. This is really good for our uh, community. I mean, we need we need the jobs, obviously. Uh, we really, really have a, a good environmental program up here where they're really self-conscious of what we're doing and how we're, we're treating our environment and stuff like that. So uh, I think that this is a really good thing for the caribou. This one looks like a good species. Looks like it's doing well. Yeah. Be too tall to measure. Be too tall to measure? No, that's pretty <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> this is a uh, number four dump, a waste rock dump, and uh, this is a trial that we've got in place for our reclamations um, work. We're trying to uh, uh, speed up mother nature. All these species that you see here are pioneering species that uh, if you disturb the land they're usually the first ones that come and uh, naturally reproduce. Lots of monitoring, we do water sampling, uh, vegetation sampling, dust sampling, um, just basically keeping track of uh, looking for changes in groundwater, water quality, dust, airborne contaminants. Having the stock availability uh, at all times and uh, which encourages, you know, local buying of, of product and, uh, and having it on site at all times so that when we do have a shovel go down or a drill go down that, you know, we have the parts to put right on it and get it right back to work. It's a great place to work. Didn't think I'd be working in the mine. I worked in the mill life all my life and older person, so to start a new trade and, and now I have the opportunity. I'm actually um, an apprentice here, which we're starting this year in the warehouse, which I'm looking forward to completing and having a red seal. We get a whole bunch of the stuff around here rolling and just keep it rolling. That's what we do, right? We just keep working on stuff. And uh, yeah, we're changing out a bucket on S4, the big shovel over there. Big, uh, big jobs. Well, it's something I tell my kids about. You know, my, they when they grow up, they want to be miners now. It's gonna be tight around that corner there until we can get two in and off the haul road. But let's just take it real easy going by that shovel. It's gonna be pretty congested to start. Anyone else got any other safety concerns? Okay. I moved from HR and um, out here to the pit. The change is a little bit significant, but it's not overly so. Um, we're all part of the same team here and working towards a goal to make the company work and, and um, you know, make a living for all of us here in the Caribou. Uh, we work from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. It's uh, this time of year is, is quite good because you still have some daylight in the evening and again daylight in the morning. The morning daylight is something to really look forward to. It's quieter than it is during the day shift but it's you feel uh, sort of a team atmosphere when you're out here knowing that other people are are feeling the same that you are so. It's important for the economy of the caribou, it's important for industry that relies on a supply of copper to do a multitude of different things, anything from TV sets to your car to the wiring in your house to all kinds of different things. So we feel like we're contributing to the economy and to our families. 